Hey, I'm Chris, and welcome to the show. We're going to cover topics from across the first five episodes of Constellation. So if you're not caught up, this is your spoiler warning. With that out of the way, let's jump in. So this video was born out of me researching the 8787 that was posted on the board at the Marine Observatory, the number that Alice used to unlock the phone when she was out on the boat. And I tried to figure out maybe what they were hinting at. And after doing some research about the number 87 and quantum mechanics, my best guess is that it's a reference to Rubidium 87. But the 87 was used twice because the phones require a four-digit pin. Now, if Rubidium sounds familiar to you, it's because we hear Henry talk about it when he's discussing the cowl with his MIT professor friend. At the center of the cowl is a chamber containing a gas of Rubidium atoms. Which brings me to my next topic, the cowl. What is it? What does it do? We've heard the show talk about it, and we've theorized about it being an information portal, among other things. But some of you may not be aware the CAL, the Cold Atomic Laboratory, is real. Yep, it was not made up for the show. The CAL was used on Earth, but NASA, just like Henry, wanted to see the results in microgravity, because the magnets that hold the atoms in place were affecting the results just by affecting the particles. So on May 21st, 2018, it was sent to the ISS on the orbital ATK CRS-9. And just like in the show, it uses rubidium atoms cooled to a mind-numbing negative 459 degrees Fahrenheit, which is just a hint above absolute zero. And in the show, lasers are used to activate the particles, and boom, the new form of matter referred to in the show is created. So what is the new matter? They talk about it in the show, but they only refer to it as new matter. The new matter they're referring to is the Bose-Einstein condensate, or a BEC for short. Now this is where it gets cool and kind of gives us some insight into the show. We know from the show that the BEC particles are in a superposition. We see the pictures that they show, and this means they can exist in multiple places at once. It is also true that every BEC is in a highly entangled state. Now they talk about quantum entanglement in the last episode. Essentially, it means that two particles can communicate with each other or affect each other across almost an unlimited distance. But what they do not explain is that when a BEC is formed, particles coalesce into a single quantum object. The atoms occupy the same quantum state and they form a single atom. Essentially, the atoms undergo a quantum identity crisis where they're no longer possible to tell apart. Although it is said that the slightest interaction with the outside world can be enough to warm the system past the condensation threshold and form the normal gas again. Which may be what occurred when Joe removed the cow from the ISS, giving us multiple versions of the characters, since in theory it's possible for entanglement to persist after the decoherence. Which is the process where quantum systems lose its quantum properties due to interactions with the environment. Okay, hopefully you're still with me and hopefully your brain didn't just overheat because, well, we have more. And it gets a little more into the woo-woo part of quantum mechanics at this point, so bear with me. So we're going to talk about quantum consciousness and it proposes that connections between neurons alone can't explain consciousness and posits that instead quantum mechanical phenomena such as the entanglement we talk about, superposition, they cause non-localized effects, have interactions with parts of our brain that are smaller than cells. So I get it. It's pretty wild to think of our brains and consciousness playing by the same rules as quantum mechanics and being subject to entanglement and superposition. But if we think about it in terms of the show, it makes sense. And it gives answers for how the characters are able to talk to each other over long distances or with their other selves or move about the different realities. Plus, with what we now know about the BCE and how it melds multiple particles together into one indistinguishable form of matter. Could this be the basis for what happened on the ISS? Now, what if reality A and reality B merged into one when the cow turned on, and then separated again after the collision because that was an interference from the environment? Then they left traces of their entangled selves on their counterpart. Could this be how Joe knows how to play the piano or why Bud has inconsistent information about his life, which makes him kind of look like a fraud when he's on stage with the conspiracy theorists? 
it's just a thought, but I would love to hear what you guys think about it. Okay, now stay with me because we're jumping into why lithium works and why emotions are important. Now keep in mind that we just discussed how quantum consciousness may have an effect on the connections between neurons in the brain and in turn our consciousness. Which brings us to the Posner molecule. Now, I'm going to hit you with some science stuff for a second, and then we'll try to simplify it. The Posner molecule is a cluster of calcium and phosphate that has been theorized to have effects on the brain that relate to quantum mechanics. In simple terms, some scientists propose that these molecules could be involved in the way our brain processes information at a quantum level. This means that that might help enable complex brain functions like consciousness or cognition, through quantum entanglement, which is, again, the linking between particles, no matter how far apart they are. Okay, I'm going to hit you with a little more science stuff, and then I'm going to explain why lithium works and why it's important in the show. Entangled Posner molecules are then taken up into the neurons, bind and release calcium ions, triggering entangled neural activity. If lithium replaced the central calcium ion in the Posner molecule, then the lithium could contribute to the decoherence. Basically, lithium is a mood stabilizer that helps you have more control over your emotions and dampens those neural connections. In our episode 5 video, Rob and I had talked in more detail about how we see more phasing and visions and physical effects on the characters when they're in a heightened emotional state, when those neurons are really firing away. And if that theory is true, then they're being provided lithium to block the connection between their other selves which is why we see Bud having such a strong effect on Henry once he throws the pills overboard. Lastly, string theory. Does it factor in? Will we hear about it? Maybe. If you're not familiar with string theory, it suggests that everything in the universe, from the smallest particle to the largest thing out there, the largest celestial bodies out there, is made up of strings. The different modes of vibration correspond to different fundamental particles. And more importantly, it's known for acquiring extra dimensions of space or versions of the multiverse. Now, you might be thinking, that's pretty cool. Thanks. We've heard the multiverse thing before. Why does this matter? It's worth noting that in 2017, a paper was presented how additional space dimensions would affect ultra-cold atoms known as BECs, which we talked about extensively. And in theory, you could detect other realities with these PCs. So it may come in, it may not, but there is science, woo-woo-y or not, super theoretical or not, that exists that they could easily bring into the show to incorporate string theory into it. All right, you made it. Congratulations. Hopefully, you'll be able to take some of this information and use it in your own theories, which we would love to hear. So leave them in the comments. Either way, it was a lot of fun to research and learn more about this stuff. I find it really fascinating, so it was fun all around. If you want to look at this yourself, I'll leave some of the links I found in the description. I think they're worth looking at, especially the video from NASA on the Cal. Super cool. Thanks for listening, and if you liked what you heard and you like what we're doing and you want to support the channel, please subscribe, leave a like, so we and the algorithm know we're on the right track. With that said, we'll meet again in episode six, titled Paul is Dead. Stay curious out there.